I just recorded like 40 minutes of video and my phone decided that it didn't want to save any of it. Okay, so maybe that's a good thing, maybe because I was kind of rambling a lot in the, in the last video. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk Tuesday. This is my second video. Um, I was given a bunch of topics, a bunch of topics, they sounded great to me, but none of them really spoke to me until a friend of mine said, ding, 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 the right topic. He was saying to talk about like, um, a hardship that I had and how I overcame it basically, how to get through, be positive. Um, and I was saying that's perfect because I've already discussed like depression on my channel and that's probably the biggest thing for me to talk about. And so I figured, since I've mentioned it in the past and a couple people haven't really heard this, I'm going to talk about how it was for a preg how my pregnancy was um, and how that negatively affected me and how I got through it. Um, because with, you know, like depression and everything, I'm too flippin' stubborn to let it really get me down, but... Um, during pregnancy, that was really my first test of patience, I guess. Um, so when we first decided to get pregnant, oh, we first got married. Let's start, let's back up. When we first got married, we thought, let's wait a couple of years before we have kids. Okay. And a little bit of time went by. Let's wait a couple months. Okay. A couple months. A little bit more time went by and I was thinking, I'm kind of ready to have a baby now. My husband wasn't ready yet. So I was like, okay, I'll keep asking, but I won't pressure. And eventually got to a point where it's just like, uh, we're not going to try, but we're not, we're not going to not try. We're just kind of, uh, if it happens, it happens. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That's kind of the point that we were at. And this was, I want to say about three months into our marriage, <laughs> three, four months, something like that, that we were just like, you know what? It's Let's, let's kind of try. Um, I think I was about six months pregnant before, or six months pregnant. Married for six months before I actually got pregnant. And no. It was before that. I don't remember how long we were married before I got pregnant. Let me do the math. So we got married in September, got mar pregnant. So August, September. No, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Yes, I, we were married for seven months before I got pregnant. Um, but we were, he was actually, that's what it was. He was ready to be pregnant about five, six months. But I didn't get pregnant until seven months, whenever we were both really ready. So, month before... Yeah, a month before I got pregnant, um, I was late on my period, and I was spotting, and then nothing. And so then I was freaking out, because I was like, why am I spotting? What's going on? Asked my mom, she said, the only time I ever spotted was when I had a miscarriage. So I went into panic mode for a couple days, because it was a little bit of spotting, and that was it. And then the nothing the next day. And then the day after that was whenever I started my period. So I was able to exhale. <laughs> but I look back on that and I think it was my body just like preparing me to be pregnant. Or my body preparing to be pregnant, I mean. And so then um, the month after that, I was like, okay. Something feels different this time. I think I might really be pregnant. But I didn't want to take a test because I didn't want to get let down. I didn't want to look, see like a negative sign and be like, oh no, I'm not pregnant. You know what I mean? So I was like, I'll wait to take a test. I'll just wait. My best friend's freaking out. No, take a test now, take it now. 
I'll wait a couple days. It's okay. And I was like dying to know, but I was also too scared to find out that I wasn't pregnant. And so I, um, I was waiting a couple days. Don't want to take, I don't want to take a test yet. And everyone, and I had to tell people at work because if I was pregnant, they had to know, um, like my condition, if they had to readjust and everything, stuff like that, because I worked in a nursing home. I was a CNA. And so they had to know the stuff. Anyway, um, I decided, okay, I'm going to take a test because I think it was like a week after I didn't start my period. No, no, it was like four days. Just kidding. <laughs> took a test and indeed said positive. I was pregnant. And I was sitting on the toilet and I remember thinking, oh, what now? Because I was so excited to be pregnant and I was like, I'm so excited. Crap. What do we actually do now? What's going to come from this? Because <laughs> we didn't really fully think about the ramifications that would come from being pregnant. And I was just like, uh, great. And my husband was kind of just like, kind of like the same response as me. They're like, yeah, so excited. What now? And my best friend is freaking out. She's like, you're going to have a baby. This is so awesome. And so I was just like, yeah, I'm going to have a baby. Okay. <laughs> um, and that first like week or so, um, my, I didn't really feel like I was pregnant. I felt like I was on my period minus the bleeding. Cramps. Um, moodiness, soreness, everything, all the symptoms or everything that you experience when, on your period, I experienced minus bleeding. It was really weird. But then after that, I was just like, I don't feel pregnant. And not too long after that, um, um, my sister-in-law, cause this is before we announced anything. We told my best friend mostly because I was freaking out and I was like, do I take a test or not take a test? And my parents, they knew that we were trying, um, so they knew it was coming soon. Same with his mom. She knew we were trying. I uh, knew it was coming soon. And um, we we actually announced at my sister-in-law's graduation party. We didn't mean to. Um, we, just don't, we didn't want to like, take away from her, but we kind of saw that she didn't want it to be completely all about her. She wanted to just be like, okay, congratulations, and now go back to business. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how we announced it. We're just like, by the way, since we're all here, I should probably tell you something. <laughs> and she was over the moon ecstatic, so happy that we're having a baby. And everyone else was just like, yeah, we saw it coming, but yay, it actually happened, having a baby. And that day was the start of when I actually started feeling pregnant because I started to smell everything. And I'm talking like bag of chips or opened up halfway across the room, um, unopened chocolate sitting in, in a plastic cup underneath another plastic cup across the room, smell, flowers down the street, everything. And it was, and I learned that I didn't like the smell of fake chocolate. It, or, you know, like the really gross uh, Hershey's chocolate, didn't like the, that smell. Didn't like the smell of fake cheese. So like processed Cheetos, um, and there's something else I didn't like. Then, I, then there's a, th a third smell that I didn't, oh, it was a particular type of flower. I didn't like a specific flower smell. And I was just like, well, this is exciting. I felt, it felt like I had a superpower, an annoying superpower, but I felt like I had a superpower. So then I was like, okay, this is the start of pregnancy. Here we go. Hop on in. Um, I, I want to say it was like a week or two after that is when it really hit. And this is whenever I hated pregnancy because the morning sickness was unreal and I couldn't get out of bed without feeling sick. I couldn't move without rushing to the toilet, but then I couldn't actually get sick. I would just feel sick and it was like, and nothing's coming out. 
and that was it. It was like my body just froze and it sunk back in. And so I was like, feel sick? Eh, not gonna lose it, come back. It was so annoying because I, I, it paralyzed me basically. I could not move. And the only thing I, can actually, could, I could actually consume, thankfully, was water for the longest time. And, oh, we found out I was pregnant in May. I was, I actually got pregnant end of April, so we didn't find out till May. And then morning sickness hit, surprise, surprise, in June. Also, our air conditioner went out, and that summer was, like, they were recording record highs of how hot it was. And our AC stopped working on us. So I was miserable all flipping day long. And it didn't help that I worked a morning shift at the nursing home. And I, I was just miserable. <clears throat> I, it was so bad. People told me they made, I made them never want to have babies ever again. And... Which, I mean, to be fair, I, I didn't enjoy pregnancy very much. So, understandable. But, you know, my, my depression was hitting. So, it really started messing with my head. And then the fact that I couldn't eat anything was even worse. Because I felt like I was starving my child. I wasn't. Because at that time, the baby so small, um... You only need like a tiny, 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 tiny fraction of what you even consume. I mean, whenever you're breastfeeding, it only takes like 10% of what you eat that goes into your breast milk. So um, that's a full grown baby. So imagine even like microscopic amount of that goes to your baby. I mean, everything goes into making the baby, but I mean, what I already had in my body was what it took from me to give like the nutrients that was given to this child not a big deal and so then um I I, I was just feeling sick I was crying all the time because I couldn't eat anything and it was for the first like month two months I could count on one hand how many things I could actually eat that didn't make me feel sick 100% of the time. Because there are some things I was like, oh, some days I can eat this, some days I can't, but no. So those five things are water, never made me feel sick. Saltine crackers, and they had to be saltine crackers. They couldn't be rich crackers. They couldn't be, um, anyway, they couldn't be any other kind of crackers, just saltine crackers. I had a bunch of crackers in my mind, but I couldn't remember the name of them. They couldn't, oh, um, also, I could always eat honeydew, always honeydew, um, and blueberry bagels, they had to be blueberry, that was it, a food, that was all I could eat all the time, that didn't make me feel sick, and then I discovered, um, ginger snaps, always eat ginger snaps but ginger makes your breath smell horrible so bad for your mouth everything just disgusting but what could I do I couldn't eat anything else um also preggy pops it's essentially just candy but for whatever reason it settled my stomach well enough that I didn't feel sick but I always had to have one in my mouth so weird and if I wasn't eating anything I always had to have a preggy pop in my mouth so I wasn't feeling sick eventually um I discovered baked potatoes I could eat a baked potato before bed and then I would wake up and I wouldn't be feeling sick because I couldn't eat anything before bed like the stuff I could eat before bed were not filling so I'd wake up feeling awful and what I also had to do was when I woke up I had a roll on my side eat a couple crackers, ginger snaps, whatever, eat something in my stomach, slowly roll back up, drink some water, and then I can go about my business. It was really annoying. It was a long process, but 
and it took like four months before I could actually before I actually figured figured that out because I couldn't function the first couple months because I couldn't eat anything. Um, and also I was working with some people that were saying like, I hate people who use pregnancy as an excuse. I'm like, okay, but, um, I, I mean, my morning sickness literally paralyzed me. Like if I moved, I was sick. I was, if I, th there were mornings I was basically curled around the toilet because there was nothing else I could do. I felt like I was dying. I felt like I just didn't even want to be pregnant anymore. I was con contemplating things that I would never contemplate in my life ever because I was so miserable. I don't think that's an excuse. Um, that also messed with my my depression. Anyway, um, so I finally figured out how to not be so miserable, but of course by that point, my my morning sickness was almost done with and it was vacating the premises. So whenever my, my morning sickness was gone, I was about halfway through my second trimester. Oh, not halfway. I was about a month into my second trimester. And then I was like, oh, so this is what it's like to be pregnant and actually enjoy it. Okay. And I was, I was lovely. I was gorgeous. I had my hair was all thick and luscious. It was shiny. My face was glowy. My my skin was dewy, completely clear. I like my curves were awesome. I was just looking and feeling fabulous, like a freaking queen. So I was like, I actually like pregnancy now. This is nice. It's pretty great. And then third trimester hit almost immediately. So did the heartburn. Mm. So here's what happened. The heartburn, it, it started off as acid reflux and then moved to heartburn. It's the same thing, but I put them separately and I'll explain why. So acid reflux for me, how it felt, was whenever you, you drink water and then immediately after lay back and it almost kind of feels like it's still in your throat and it's trying to go up your sinuses, that's how it always felt every time I laid down. Whether or not I drank or ate something prior to that, it always felt like it was still stuck in my throat, stuck in my sinuses, it was awful. And whenever heartburn hit, that was never it actually started getting painful. Whenever it actually started to kind of burn a little bit, whenever I couldn't breathe. And it was, it kind of felt like whenever um, your hot cocoa is so hot, but it's cool enough that you can drink it straight from the, the mug without having to use a spoon without burning your mouth or something. But you don't have to blow on it, but it's just like that perfect warmth. That's how it felt my throat sinuses all the time extremely uncomfortable so um i had to lay on my left side i don't know why this is the way the body works if you lay on your left side um because your stomach is uh, on the left side of your body so if you lay on your left side it helps to not feel like you it helps with um acid reflux heartburn all that and i couldn't do that because during the time that I was feeling wonderful, my, my baby decided that she wanted to start doing flips and somersaults. And she was a flipping gymnast, literally <laughs> flipping. It was amazing. It was so great. She figured out how to roll. I was crying. It was wonderful. But because of this, she also discovered that um, she didn't like me laying certain ways which means she didn't like it whenever I laid on my left side. And keep in mind, whenever your stomach stretches, um, there are two round ligaments right here. Let's tilt this down. Right here on your stomach, two round ligaments. The way that it was described to me is you take a rubber band and you keep stretching and stretching and stretching, pull it until it can't stretch anymore. That's what the round ligament does around 
your belly, basically, around the uterus, really. And it's, kind of, it's just that uterine lining. And it keeps it um, kind of, like, contained, if that makes sense. Anyway, that was stretched out, which means whenever I lay down my left-hand side, my daughter liked to punch it. It was the most painful thing I experienced. More painful than the heartburn. So I had to lay on my right side, but then laying on your right side makes the heartburn worse. I had to lay on my back, but I couldn't lay on the back because again, heartburn, and it felt like it was going back in my throat and I couldn't breathe. Plus also, if I laid on my back, or so her hand was right here, her head was down here, so guess where her feet were? Up in my rib cage. And so she liked to push her feet out on the rib cage. And the thing about that is you'd think that it would make it easier for me to breathe, but no, I felt like I was suffocating even more. So I couldn't lay on my back, couldn't lay on my right side, couldn't lay on my left side. I was miserable. Also couldn't lay on my stomach, but I couldn't lay down. So I had to do, I had to tilt myself to the left a little bit, put a pillow under my stomach, pillow under my back, pillow underneath uh, my shoulder blades and my, and my head. And also with how she was positioned, if I moved or bent or something a certain way, she would kind of push on my sciatic nerve and make it kind of painful and weird feeling. So I had to put a pillow underneath my thighs so I didn't slide down and put pressure there. And so I was kind of like, I felt like this as, as I was laying down. It was super freaking comfortable. But being that pregnant, I had to pee every 20 minutes. And so if I was like this, I basically had to go, get out of bed of course my husband thought it was the funniest thing watching I mean he would he would help me but not gonna lie it was pretty funny to watch and I was just like help me I'm stuck it was bad but um yeah I didn't like pregnancy for those reasons and here's the worst part I couldn't even eat a waffle I was always craving waffles, and I could not eat a waffle because it gave me heartburn. I still ate waffles because in my mind it was worth it. But, I mean, water gave me heartburn. Waffles gave me heartburn. Um, things that were not acidic gave me heartburn. Acidic things also gave me heartburn, but that was because they are acidic. That's the thing about heartburn is acidic foods normally trigger heartburn. And acid reflux and all that stuff. But I was eating non-acidic foods and they were giving me heartburn. Water is not supposed to be a trigger, but it was a trigger. It was miserable. And I was also hot all the time. My whole body was a furnace. So in the summertime, that was miserable. Um, in the wintertime, it was fine. It was mostly fine because um, whenever we lived up north, we had roommates and they always liked to keep things cold. So it was okay. it was perfectly fine because I was always hot. So keeping things cold, just had to have like a light blanket over me, and that was fairly comfortable. Um, yeah, pregnancy was not enjoyable enjoyable for me. And then I gave birth, and that is a different story in and of itself. And that is actually a happier story. I had a wonderful birth. It was amazing, and is. I'm convinced that it's 100% due to the fact that one of my closest friends is a doula and she helped me through everything. And she helped my husband through everything, helped him to know what to do, different positions, helped me comfortable, everything. It was wonderful. But I'll tell that on a different story. But anyway, um, yeah, that was that. Good morning. Hello. How are you, my beautiful princess? How'd you sleep? I got a girl's treat. Yeah? I'm just doing a video. I was talking about how when you were in mommy's bed. <coughs> mm, that was some crazy hair. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this Real Talk Tuesday. And um, I'm going to be going through other topics. And hopefully I will actually talk about the topics that other people wanted me to talk about. I just wanted to talk about um, overcoming 
all of that because it was really hard. And I actually explained how I overcame it. Basically, I just had to take a lot of deep breaths. I had to relax, breathe deeply, work through it, and just really wait. That was what it was, is I just had to wait. Because once I, once I had her, um, my body was no longer miserable. Well, kind of, but that's... Anyway, I just had to wait. I had to wait until the morning sickness passed, wait until the um, heartburn passed, and just try to like keep a mental state of everything happens for a reason. Everything will work itself out. And that's how I worked it out. All right. You ready to say bye? Okay, you're going to say bye to the camera. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on my next video.